Okay, good morning, traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, November 13th. Great to be with you guys here. Jaya, Kamal, Kelly, Marco, Pooja, Ty. We got the whole room here today. Chip, great to see you guys all in the room. Marco wants to take a look at Dollar Swiss. Really, Marco? <laughs> sure, I got you, man. We'll take a look. Okay, so we got a lot to cover. Things worked out pretty nice last night. Um, a lot of the turns came just ahead of uh, some levels that we were looking at. So um, if you didn't slip into any of these positions last night, I don't blame you, but there were some nice plays. Uh, we'll take a look at the DXY at the start of the things, just see where we are on that. Euro, Kiwi, Aussie, and Aussie Yen from last night. Uh, all pretty interesting trades. Sterling, I know Jamie's all over that, but uh, still a little timid there. We'll take a look at what the Sterling levels are doing. Dollar CAD, same deal there pressing the highs, and gold dipped a little bit deeper than we wanted, uh, but we're essentially looking for support here. Last but not least, I do want to cover crude. Um, <laughs> that thing just can't seem to find a break either as it continues to slip lower, and we will jump into dollar Swiss here for Marco. All right, so where shall we begin? Uh, here's what the DXY looked like back on the 8th. This was last week. We were talking about this descending uh, pitchfork formation, and um, we were looking for failure here, right? Obviously, this level gave out, and the top side breach took out some really nice upside levels uh, on the DXY. Really quick, well, here's what the chart looks like on the int intraday, but really quick, the weekly. Uh, the reason I say some of these turned right ahead of some levels uh, is because they did. Here's the 618 retracement of the 2017 decline, 97.87. We registered a high last night at 97.69. Um, you know, you don't know if that's it. You don't know if it's got a little bit more to go. Momentum is setting divergence on, on a weekly standpoint here. So just a lot, the, the possibility near term, there was some, di there was some divergence into a nice resistance range. Here's what the daily chart looks like price action with a higher high, the oscillator with equal or lower highs, slope support off the lows that we made back in September, a parallel off that caught resistance caught resistance. Again, there's that 618. I would have loved for this to nestle up into here before we turn. And it still might, okay? It still might. But, you know, all things held constant, we've been trying to look for the exhaustion trade on the upside. So not out of the woods yet. Your major near-term support, I would say 97.10. It's the 100% extension, but most importantly, guys, it's also the monthly open comes in 97.08. So this region right here is kind of what you want to see price start to slip below. Uh, to suggest we have an exhaustion high in place. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. Okay, and there's that formation that we were looking at last week. Okay, we came right into resistance. We popped right through. Once you cleared that range, you're basically still looking for the upside move. There's 97.10, even took out that parallel. Look at the touch of that slope resistance. So clean, guys, so clean. Here's the 240. Okay, it's just freakishly clean on the way down and on the way up. So look, this is your first area. If dollar is going to bounce into the U.S. Open, this is kind of where you'd expect to see some sort of recovery. Still looking lower, though. Okay, we want to see an exhaustion push all the way down, at least to the median line that converges on a basic 38.2 near 96.92. Um, so that's kind of the game plan here. Now, again, because of where that 618 is on the weekly, on the daily, wouldn't put it past this thing to make another high on a divergence, a little bit stronger of a signal maybe before we start to turn. So I'm very nimble here. All my positions are like quarter of, a, uh, of my average trade side because we are trading against the trend here, right? We're fading an uptrend into resistance. So if it's going to turn, this was a nice move. This is where you might find a little bit of a bounce, but this is a bigger support structure that we're looking at. Here's the 60 minute. And again, it's a weak divergence signal because both reference points are above 70. Nonetheless, higher high in price, lower high in the oscillator. Weekly open comes in just above that region of 38.2 and the uncovered gap. So it just it's, the clean, the levels are just super clean. Any questions on DXY? <clears throat> That's a level of interest right there on the immediate front. 
97.10. Remember, week uh, monthly open comes in at 97.08. <laughs> hey, man, no worries. Well, he says, uh, hello, Michael. Was late as always. No worries. Great seeing the room. Uh, just going over DXY here, Iman. By the way, Iman, did I answer your question? You had sent me an email over the weekend. Did I get your question in yesterday's webinar? I saw it after the webinar. I felt bad <laughs> that I didn't address it, but we were talking about the euro, uh, which we'll go over in a moment. Okay, let's do it. We're going to go over euro dollar here in a moment. So if there are no other questions on DXY, super clean on the levels, guys. This is your first level of structural support. Could see a little bit of a rebound here into heading to the U.S. trade session. We're also right at 40 in momentum. So um, lighten up the load if you're holding uh, dollar shorts. Again, while below these highs, essentially, we're still looking for that failure move lower towards the median line. Uh, that is DXY number two is euro so here's what we looked at last night uh, a little bit of a rework here on the euro levels uh, we scratched some pitchforks uh, on the move uh, Ty says are you a bull now in what in what pair Ty euro DXY no, I'm not a bull per se right now. I think you could get a rebound into the U.S. Open. Um, you know, you're essentially still looking to fade that strength, in my humble opinion. But if you're going to get a little bit of a bounce, this would be the spot. Not interested in playing that bounce, though, Ty. Uh, I'd rather have that bounce to give me another entry for the short side. So here's Euro. And this is obviously 60% weighted uh, of, of the index. Uh, and this is why this is not out of the woods yet either. So yesterday we were noting the fact that we were looking for some support. Um, basically the ideal play would have been a drop right here. Again, that's 618. It's the same range of the DXY, a little bit lower. This is a hundred percent extension. That's 111.64. So a nice nestled region of support here while noting yesterday that we were basically at slope support. So that ended up holding guys. That was the low. Here's the rebound and the move higher. Uh, you're not out of the woods until you're above the monthly open tie. That's 113.12. 113.01, this little region of support right here, former swing lows, right? This is the yearly low previ, previous, rather, to the one that we made uh, in October. That whole range, 13.02, 13.11, 13.12, that's where you need to breach to validate a little bit more of a stronger reversal in Euro. Right now, you're still moving higher within downtrend, okay, down, downtrend channel. So it's just a bounce within within the broader downtrend. This would be the breakout that would put me more constructive. Near term, yeah, I think you could get a little bit higher. But unless we mount in best 113.12, you're still inside this formation. Again, the weekly charts and daily charts for Euro are really clean. Here's the daily chart. 618, that longer term retracement from last year. Slope. Here's the channel that we're in right now. Right, one touch, two touch. Would have loved to see it drop into that. And again, you still could, but all things held constant, we're looking for exhaustion ahead of that low. So I have a pitiful position on here. It's really, really small. If it gets you know anywhere near 113, I'll zone that out for the rest of it. Um, it's such a small position that there's not really much to scale out of. So we'll have to just see if we can get that extension to 113. This is the 60. Let me just check this out real quick. Okay. Hey, Mitten, great seeing the room. Says hi, Mike and all. Any questions here on Euro, guys? Weekly chart's pretty clear. This is why I want to see... 111.86 again, um, but also, you know, guys, remember the slope that we were working with back from that 2015 high. See this one, two touch, three touch before we broke and we saw acceleration. We turned right ahead of that this year. Watch the weekly close. This could be the failure. I don't know, um, but we'll definitely be looking at this into the close of the week for sure on Euro. 
So the rework works pretty good. No change to any of that, uh, any of those levels from last night. Questions on Euro? All right. Uh, number three, Kiwi. So this one, <laughs> uh, I know Jamie's looking at it. We're obviously the swings, the swing trades are involved here. Um, here's what we've been following for the Kiwi. So really clean as far as this pitchfork that we were following from last week, resistance along the median line, got a little bit messy on the breach, but where we turned last week on Friday was just magnificent, right at that upper parallel converged on 38.2. Here was the pullback. The previous level we were talking about uh, was 67 into 67.05, uh, 67.15, excuse me. Interestingly enough, I removed that from this chart just to try to clean things up. Um, you know, the wider retracement on the daily chart, uh, that 618 of the decline, longer term ascent rather, excuse me, at 67.15, that was the support zone that we were looking at. You could see a huge pivot there. So we anchor a low just above the 67 handle, you know, in overnight trade, you would have gotten a decent 40 pip run to the upside. You're now testing the weekly opening range high. So this is kind of where we make or break. If we push higher, great. Look for that extension to 68. The May low comes in at 68.51. You got the parallel up there to deal with as well. Um, but this is one where I'm really, really kind of cautious at because I do like the long side, but we're trading towards the upper side of the range. So if we do break below 67, I think you get a bigger dump towards that 50 line lower parallel maybe even the 50% retracement. Uh, long story short, guys, Kiwi broke downtrend resistance from the yearly highs. So ever since this break, really early in the month, we've been looking higher. The reason we started to shift our attention was because of what we extended into. Again, that 38.2 pitchfork resistance, really nice pullback. This was the first range. This is your broader bullish inbound, okay? Um, so if it dips down even lower, 66.60s, a little bit lower than that, you start to hit that 100-day uh, moving average, nice little zone there. But ultimately, this is a breakout trade, right? The momentum signature has changed since the beginning of the year. Ever since that high we made, momentum was unable to break above uh, 60 with any meaningful moves. Here's the first 60 break that we've seen. This change in behavior. You know, the broader picture looks constructive. I just think that... Um, Again, I kind of want to see a new low here if we start to fail ahead of those highs. The play for me in overnight trade was the rebound, but near term, that rebound has taken you right into the upper uh, or the opening range highs for the week, let's say. So look for a break here. If it gives you that move, great. Same levels, no change. Uh, but be a little nimble on this one as well. We don't have much Kiwi data, guys. You get house sales later tonight, Westpac consumer uh, confidence from Australia, but you know, we don't really get anything major from uh, New Zealand yet. Is gold on today's list? I'm long at 1290. Yes, Eman, gold is. Yeah, I got you. We'll jump into that. Uh, we'll jump into that next if you're in a position there for you. Any questions here on, on Kiwi? Again, daily chart, really clean. Monthly chart, or uh, the weekly chart, rather. Looks like this. And this is why we thought we could get a little bit of a kickback from here. You see this zone, 38.2 retracement. This is the, the low week close for May. Um, the low week close for the year comes in the same exact zone for 2017. So this whole, you know, 30, 40 pip region is massive, is massive. So it was worth a little bit of a pullback. Again, I do think that you're still looking for the broader upside. It's just that below this region, the risk for... Some exhaustion is still there. So near-term risk for a little bit more of a pullback, like in the long side for Kiwi, generally speaking, while within the confines of this ascending formation. So it looks pretty good. Questions on New Zealand dollar. Okay, the other one from last night, <clears throat> Aussie. This is the one that kind of annoyed me a little bit. I was really, really wanting to see it drop into 71.60, 71.62, really sweet spot there of support. Um, there was just 
sort of things that are all loaded up there. Here, here's Ozzy, first of all, on the weekly charts. And this is uh, the thing that drew my attention the most. So here's the rebound that we looked at earlier in the month. That 618 line that caught resistance, caught resistance. Again, we turned ahead of resistance both of these turns. Here, here it is again, and then the pullback. So we noted that the broader momentum profile here looks extremely constructive for a low. Here's the oscillator making a higher low, one above 30, one below 30, price action making a lower low. You got the trigger break, test of support before the rebound. So it looks good for the broader turn. That being said, the pivot level that we need to clear is still 73.27, 73.85. This is still the range we need to beat to validate that a more important low is in. Until that gives out, guys, we want to be nimble here into this resistance range. We do want to see the break, but the dollar has just been relentless. So anything that we take on this, again, just my humble opinion, I've been really nimble on the way in and on the way out. I don't look for the 50 pip, 60 pip range. Uh, it just, you know, over the last couple of weeks, that's just every trade has continued to come back because the market just doesn't want to stretch yet. Here's Aussie dollar. Let me show you the daily chart first. Oops. So here's the daily chart. I'm not thrilled with this pitchfork. Okay, just as a as a as a rule of thumb there, but we have to work with what we, what we have. The 50 line, we were looking for support there. We've got the former swing highs, uh, just a decent level to look for some support. Obviously, 72, 72.06, this whole pivot region of the 618 retracement of the decline. This is a 2017 open. It's been a pivot in price. For me, it's all about this range break. Today's lows, essentially, um, and that 100-day moving average, which converges on the median lines, so 72.50. Here's the intraday chart. And here's what we were looking at last night. So again, I want to see a stretch into 71.60, 71.62. The low we registered last night was 71.69. Uh, no, 71.64. So just ahead. Uh, and here's the pop higher. So look, we're not anywhere near the the weekly opening range highs yet. Um, you know, a lot of people will be looking at this and asking if this is divergence. Yeah, I would say it is divergence, but it's a weak signal nonetheless. So it's not quite conviction turn yet, but certainly it looks good. Certainly looks good as this being sort of false break scenario since we tagged this break, we sailed through on both sides and then we tested it again of support. This pitchfork has been really, or this slope rather, has been really good in this advance. Resistance, break, support, support, break, acceleration. Again, the upper slope caught those highs to the pip almost. So I'm still liking this slope, still working with it for now. Um, to the 100 day moving average, 72.50, was that 72.57 would be sort of a breakout in my mind that would put us back on the constructive path here in, here in Aussie. But nice initial bounce in overnight trade. If you took that, take a little off. Okay, be a little bit nimble here. I'd have a stop right below here. So if we dip back below this swing low, we're probably going to see a drop into 7160 again. Um, as long as that's preserved, look for the extension towards 7239. And then again, that 7257 level is big. There is a second trend line channel on Aussie drawn from the high right after the one you are using. On what time frame? You have it on the daily already, uh, Ty is saying. Let's take a look. Talking like that. Did we really break the downtrend or have a throw over? So Ty, that's what I'm trying to ascertain here. In my mind, this does look, well, first of all, throw over is when it's on the top side. This would be a false break, um, but that's just semantics. I see, I know what you're saying. Yeah, are you talking about this breakout? I'm getting confused, Ty, on which one you're talking about. This one I would I would discount as a false break as of now because we've already come back and tested that same slope again as support and it's held. That puts emphasis on this in the immediate term. So if this breaks again, 
you'd look for a resumption. Okay. That's what I'm working with as far as this is concerned. So we need to see some upside against this low essentially from now. Um, you know, the upper bounds, if you're talking about this slope on the daily, did this break and is this a, a throw over? That's what we're trying to decide right now. That's why for me, the immediate range break is here. That's what we need to see move. If we get back above that 100 day moving average, which converges on the slope here, then yeah, I would think that we're back on resumption. This is not what you want to see, right? And Kiwi's doing nothing of the sort. Kiwi's downtrend for the year broke and it's on its way. It's clear formation for a pattern to the upside. Aussie, not so much. It's downtrend resistance for the year broke, but we came back below. So that divergence in price action with related assets, again, manifesting itself. It's not a very strong signal for the broader reversal play. Certainly on the upside, Kiwi looks cleaner. Clean, uh, Kiwi looks like it's got more juice behind it. Um, but this just might be sort of a, a, a lagging start here in Aussie. So it needs to materialize a break above 72.50 rather soon here, if this is going to work. Todd, does that make sense? That low's got to hold. Otherwise, you're looking for a drop right back to the yearly opening, uh, the yearly low day close. That's 7086. I do not want to get caught left footed on that one. So that's my take on Aussie. He says, yes. All right. Good questions, Ty. We're just starting to get our feet back at here in Aussie. Remember, we, we kind of strayed away all of last uh, month. It was just kind of a chop fest. Uh, this break into the start of the month was really, really well, you know, it's what we wanted to see. So just trying to ascertain what's the next entry level. This is still going to be a little bit of a meaningful support in price for sure, 7161. All right. So that's Aussie. The other one that we covered last night was, um, that's number four. Here's number five is Aussie yen. Same, similar scenario. Um, if you didn't want to take a position against the dollar, which I, I completely understand if you didn't want to do that, but Aussie yen was also coming into a level uh, of support. This one, again, turning just pips from where we wanted. 81.33 was the level I noted last night. The low that we registered was 81.39, 81.38.6. So we didn't quite get there. It was a beautiful confluence of median line support, resistance, resistance, break, acceleration, support, and a basic 38.2 of the range. Uh, of the advance off that October low. So just beautiful, okay? Uh, didn't get into this one, wish I did. If you did take it last night, 82.25, do something there. Do something there. Iman, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to, to jump to gold for you. I'll get that right next. Um, but do something here, okay? If this is gonna hold, interestingly enough, I was looking at this earlier in the session. If you bring this in, and this is getting really granular here into a 30 minute, but just bear with me. You take a basic retracement of this, just, just this near-term advance. Look where that 50% comes in. Okay, so levels of interest into the U.S. Open right here on Aussie N, 8188. Let's call near-term bearish inval right here at 618, 8176. Both levels of which, if we kind of drift down to U.S., I'd be looking for a possible scenario for the breakout. Really nice move here though, really nice move. So it's from a pretty big, uh, or just ahead of, a really nice area that we were looking for anyway, which is right here. Any questions on Aussie N? Anyone involved in this, in this cross? Uh, typically seen as a very strong barometer for broader risk because of the interest rate divergences here, but all things held constant, Aussie Yen came off of that support level we were looking at. Um, here's the broader picture for Aussie. It's ugly on the daily. What really turns me on for Aussie is the weekly. Here's Aussie N on the weekly standpoint. Um, just pretty wicked clean here. This is a big region, 83. Again, that 38.2 of the entire drop from 2017's high, the 52 week moving average, the median line for the pitchfork all converge right there. So definitely was worth the kickback. Is this it? Well, on the near-term charts, it would suggest that you still have a little bit more to go on the daily chart for sort of a correction, a cor correctionary play. So if you hold 82.25 again today, I would look for a new low. 
Okay, and that's kind of going to would move pretty decent with another move lower in risk. Um, again, I don't kind of necessitate that that happen, but certainly that would help. So that's the emphasis on this region today. If this fails and we make it through 81.76 again, I think you get the deeper cut. The play was the rebound. If you were in that last night, like I said, this was your first target. Uh, bring your stops to break even or better. Take a little off the table. Next upside, if this breaks, we're looking for resumption. 83 and 83.25 both along that top parallel. But it's a, a pretty clean formation. I thought I, I thought it was worth showing you guys just because where we were heading last night turned out to be a beautiful entry. Again, kind of kicking myself that I didn't get a chance to jump into this one, but boy, what a spot. What a spot. So we just came right into this and then ripped right higher. We're right now at near-term resistance, 82.25. Questions on Aussie N. Eman says, it's okay. All your setups are amazing. <laughs> Cheers, Eman. Thank you. It's not my setups. It's the market's levels. I'm just helping you guys find them. All right. Let's jump into gold here because Eman is in that trade moment at the moment. It was in last night's update. Here's number six. Uh, excuse me. In the previous night's update. Here's uh, where we where, what we look like on gold. So, Got a little bit deeper than I thought it would, Iman. I'm glad that you actually had the, you know, the the guts to get into it because it was do or die. And I still think it is do or die here for gold. The level in focus, guys, is 12.01. It's the 50% retracement. There's slope support there. It is loaded up. Here's gold first on the weekly chart. Okay. Um, I'll draw your attention to one thing that we're going to be looking at at the close, and that's this median line for the slope we've been following from the last years and this year's highs. Um, no, Siri, I didn't say anything to you. Uh, here's um, here's that slope. So the weekly close this week is going to matter. See how this manifests. Remember, broader bullish invalidation for the entire advance from 2016 is 1184. We've been talking about that level for months. We've tested it for three consecutive weeks back in September and October before rebounding. That's still my line in the sand. It's this year's low week close, and it converges now on the broader slope from 2016. If we get below that, Amen, we're done. Gold is going to see a you know really, really, really rough days. I personally, again, favor that we hold. Um, now, the dollar weakness would help, but certainly these are major critical levels that we want to keep in mind on the weekly standpoint. Here's the daily chart for gold. Okay. Um, nope. I'm lying. Here's the daily chart for gold. This is why we were looking for support at 1201, 1205. Okay. Granted, we did close below it yesterday. That would, in my mind, be a validated break. It wasn't by that much. Here's the stab higher. But, man, my problem with it is if you don't mount 1205 today, this could be a break of support, check of resistance, then move lower. So, really, the emphasis on price and gold is we have to close back above 1205 today for me to continue to like this for the upside, okay? Bearish invalidation is gonna be steady at the monthly open, former swing highs, the 100-day moving average, all of that comes in, last month's late swing low at 1212, 1214, 1215, okay? That's the region that we need to clear uh, to move back on the upside here in gold. So. I would work with a tight stop on that one, Eman. You said you're long from 1298. Is that right? Is that a typo, Eman? Or you got caught? You got caught from the long from 1298. 1198. Thank you. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I was like, I definitely couldn't have steered you in that direction. <laughs> 1198. Okay. Yes. Um, so here's the intraday chart. Here's the intraday chart. And this is why I do like that near-term play. Look what we did last night. Here's what the report looked like a couple of nights ago. Uh, and we were looking for a support hold at one of these two levels. Here's the move, right? We did break below it. But look what we did. On that another low, you did make a third divergent reference point. Again, a weak signal, but nonetheless, it's there. Uh, if you pull a trigger break on this, something like this, or even I'd probably be working with something like this. 
in which case you've got the trigger break, test of support, then move higher on the divergence run. That's actually a pretty decent signal. So look, for you right now, this is resistance, the 50 line. You need to top this, and then you're looking for a move right back into that 12, 12, 12, 14 level that we just talked about. Whoops, don't wanna do that. There we go, right in here. That's what you're looking for. Now, Iman, keep in mind that that's also right past the weekly opening range. So certainly, in my humble opinion, if we top 1214, that's an objective break of the weekly opening range. That's an objective break of a major pivot in price. And that's a break above the median line. We start to look back to the upper parallel. Okay. Ooh, Iman, I'm so sorry to hear that. So it has the flu. That's no fun. Well, feel better. At least you're in a winning trade. That always helps, right? <laughs> um, this is make or break, in my humble opinion. If we settle back below 1201 today, guys, on the daily close, you got to look for 11, 1191. At that point, um, it's bad news. It's bad news. Again, I favor the hold here. And at least on the initial stretch, that is a nice way to do it on divergence, the nice stretch right back into the parallel. We got to get above this 1205 level, at least today um to kind of discount that break that we made last night does that make sense Iman? i mean you nailed the low you pretty much got into the best possible scenario it's just that if momentum doesn't start to follow through and the us open doesn't see a clearing of 1205 then we might be in a little bit of trouble okay we might still have that drop to 1191 to go any questions on gold So slope caught the low. We're looking for basically a closed recovery back above 1201. 1205 would give us a little bit more conviction on this one. <clears throat> that is gold prices, number six. It helped. Thank you. A hey, more than welcoming, man. Nice, uh, nice entry. All right. Sterling, uh, number seven. Again, I'm kind of leaving Jamie up to this one, but... Uh, here are the levels that we've been following since the beginning of the week. I just like yesterday completely turned me off because the region, the reason, the region, excuse me, for me, uh, as I've been telling you guys, is 2877 and 2909. That's my limit. That's what I wanted to see hold. Um, now, you, you know, we dipped through it. We came back above it. It's straddling now. I still do want to see the recovery, but this is where I want to see hold support if this was going to be the formation that we're working with. Here's Sterling now. Again, in my opinion, it's just, you know, it's just a little messy. Um, here's what we looked like earlier in the week. This slope broke. This slope from this low broke. Uh, just I just extended a parallel here to see if we were going to make that low last night. We didn't. Looks like we're breaking through the initial weekly range highs, but guys, I wouldn't take this out unless we broke 3043 in that, or even 3030. In that regard, for me, a decent pivot in price would put us back above, you know, this major uh, price inflection point. Cool. I'd be looking for the resumption back towards the October highs, but it's sterling. Um, you do have some sterling data. Uh, we actually got jobless claims yesterday, which were better than expected. So some things looking cheery here um but long story short i'm just not there yet may is about to reveal uh the betrayal of brexit no sovereignty recovery the uk becomes a colony wow tire has really bearish thoughts on the uh on brexit Kelly says, hello, pal. Euro. Yeah, I'll jump into your yen after this. Sure. I got to hit Euro, uh, dollar Swiss here for Marco first, but I will get to it. So, Ty, yeah, the the implications obviously are, you know, the political implications are what they are. But for price, um, I don't, you know, I'm not a super bear here. You know, Brexit, Schmexit, whatever the, whatever the case scenario bring, turns out to be from a price standpoint, look, um, if anything, at best, you're in consolidation. You have a series of higher lows. You have a series of, of lower highs. Uh, I'm I'm just not of the mindset that sterling is going to fall off the side of, of the planet. Okay? It could. Monthly support, monthly open is my line in the sand at this point. Here's your monthly open. You got that um, pivot in price from that swing high they made in December of 2016. That's right around 27, again, that level, 2777. 
but I kind of want to see this thing start to find some support. <laughs> Schmegzit, I like the alternative name for it. Much more appropriate, says Mitten. Uh, no disrespect uh, to anyone who lives in, in the UK, but I try not to let that stuff filter into my thought process. He's Ty saying, I just thought I would mention it. I follow this closely. Yeah, Ty, no. And I'm always interested in feeling, getting a feel for what, you know, broader opinion is on this stuff. You can definitely throw that at me here. I'm, I'm not betray I'm not uh, begrudging it, but from a price standpoint, again, it can really mess things up if you're trying to extrapolate opinion from what's going on. On this one, for me, this is again, 3043. This is the resumption trade. That's what we got to beat to get above it. On this stretch right here, I'm still willing to work with a constructive outlook off this level from this reversal off 2877, the same level I just talked about. On the daily chart, all the same, 3043, that's the breakout. Okay, so if anything, we're at least getting a little bit more of a cleaner move here in Sterling. Um, or I won't even want to say move, cleaner levels. We need to clear 3043 to mark resumption. At that point, guys, we'll take a quick extension of this first wave luck leg up. And that should give us a little bit more cleaner levels. I just want to see what this looks like now, actually. Bear with me one second. <laughs> so the 100% extension comes in right on the October open. That's sick. Or December low, excuse me. Um, 133.02. That's sweet. Nice. I'll leave that on there for now. Make it a little bit clear. Whoop. There you go, right there. All right, now this is making an assumption that this is the low, which we can't make that assumption just yet. But as it stands right now, it converges on a level we're already looking at, a pivot we've already been tracking, right? More conviction. Mitten says, I'm in the UK, so happy to discuss with anyone that thinks otherwise. Hey, Mitten, do you think 127 has a strong double bottom on the daily? Um, so here's the thing, Mitten. Uh, this is my issue with double bottoms. Yeah, it could materialize into a double bottom. And certainly, unlike the Euro, unlike the DXY, unlike a lot of the crosses, this never broke into a fresh yearly low. That says something. That says something. Where Euro is already probing fresh lows, right? So the only thing I want to say to you is this, Mitten. A double bottom, from a technical analysis standpoint, the real way to use it is once it breaks the upside. So if we clear 33, then we have an objective measured move, right? Whoops. Right? Then we have an objective measured move for what we should be targeting, right? But that only happens and the double bottom only becomes a measured objective once we clear the high. So the problem is that every time price checks the low and then checks the low again, everyone starts screaming double bottom, right? Well, it has no merits because it might just go right through it again. The the breach of the range, that's when the measured move becomes an objective. So I'm with you that it could turn out to be a, a double bottom mitten, and it's good to have our sort of guard on ready, but certainly we don't have conviction of that happening just yet. He says, cool, got it. Hot, forgotten about the need for the break above 30. Yeah, and, and it's not just you, Min. A lot of us, you know, a lot of retail traders that's the first thing they, they start to run into uh, because double bottoms can be very effective, but certainly every time we test support, we can't just call it a double bottom. It's the break of the upside range that would clear the way. So I'm with you. That would be great. <laughs> I would love to see it. But first things first, look for a breach above 3043 to really get things going here. All right. Questions on... The British pound. I'm going to go ahead and remove this slope, guys. I just wanted to kind of leave it here to give you a... Actually, I'll leave it on there for now. It's not hurting anyone. Okay, moving right along. Uh, dollar cat number eight, have been unable to get a fix on this thing. It just loves trend line resistance. It just loves it. It just wants to ride it all the way to oblivion, okay? 
132.56, that's still resistance, a 7.86 retracement, nothing major there, but it converged a little bit later on uh, the week, right on that region. You know, we were looking for failure here as momentum was making divergence, price action with a higher high, the oscillator with a lower high. Again, price action with a higher high, the oscillator still holding sub 70. So look, I don't, what do I want to say here? I, maybe I'm being stubborn. I still want to see exhaustion move lower. Conviction just isn't there. Conviction just isn't there. Here's the daily chart. I want, don't want to put it past this thing and see a check of 32.56. Remember, we were talking about this region for weeks, 31.30 into 31.55. We finally broke and closed above on Friday. It's pointless to try to fight this here yet. Um, you know, if we get into the upper parallel with a little bit more of, a, of an exhaustion like this, maybe it might be worth a shot to play the recovery um, in the CAD, the dollar move lower but it's just not there yet. It's just not there yet. Oddly enough, dollar is actually weaker against all its major counterparts today, guys, except yen. Quick look at the performance summary for the day. Still has the dollar weaker against everything save the yen, and it's not that the yen is stronger. It's pretty much unchanged on the session. So I don't want to be stubborn on this. You know, you guys know where I stand. I, I, maybe I'm capitulating, but I do want to see exhaustion sub 32.56. I want to see move back to the parallel then they can do whatever it wants to do. But this move has just been unable to find any any sellers on the way down. So it it doesn't make sense for me to fight it. It doesn't make sense for me to fight. Just know that I'm on the lookout for exhaustion here. If we breach the high day close is 3340, 3341, that's a clear cut target. This is your first area to worry about. So that's the loony. It's been really testing my patience. I know that Jamie's looking at the same exact spot, 3257. I think he wrote that in the update last night, guys. So maybe we get the tag. It certainly is a nice place to find a reversal. All right. One last one from my end is crude, and then we'll jump into your questions, guys. I got dollar Swiss for Marco. I got Euro Yen. Um, and Chip wants to see S&P and NASDAQ. I don't really have S um, NASDAQ. Uh, I don't really have intraday setups, but I'll be more than happy to take a look for you, Chip. Uh, remember that, guys, Jamie will be on with the midweek strategy webinar tomorrow. He's a little bit more of a look on the on the equity side, but let's take a delve into crude prices real quick. Look, you know, it's, it's not worth it in my humble opinion to get anything new on the short side for crude. This is, you know, we're pressing some pretty big levels here. So guys, remember we've been following this chart for weeks. It's just continued to drop the big level of support that we were talking about for a while was 65.25 to 65.82. We sat there for over a week monthly open right ahead of the monthly open we broke right below we've been sinking ever since parallels have been working like no one's business this was big for me 60 into 59.84 or no, 59.94 this was pretty big it's the yearly open guys so despite all the volatility that we've seen in crude prices this year we're essentially unchanged since the start of the year um ty says this is the real tell that something has broken it will tie if we materialize a couple of daily closes below here, specifically a weekly close below. Here's the weekly chart on crude. Here's the weekly chart on crude. Um, you know, where if we're going to find any type of recovery tie, this is where I think it happens. That's why I'm like unable to get excited about pressing shorts any further. My play was the short. Remember, this was a big break. We talked about this at length once it broke and it broke below the median line too. And the, the 52 week moving average conviction move here. The first levels were 65, uh, 62.56 and the yearly open at 66.06. 60, so this is my problem. A 38.2, the advance from the 2016 advance converges on slope support basically into the end of this month. So, you know, I don't want to press any fresh shorts into here with the same time tie. Look at the formation, man. So this is the pitchfork we were following from back here. We stayed in that all the way into the end of 2017 when we finally broke. We checked that upper parallel as support. We're there again. 
we're there again. You know what I mean? So I'm actually starting to look for support heading into 57.45, basically from where we are now into 57.45 on the weekly chart, okay? So just a broader picture from 1,000 feet up, right? Really clean momentum trigger break. This thing was in consolidation since the start of the year as far as a momentum standpoint. Yeah, nice break, but this is your first major area of structural support. Here's the daily chart. Pitchfork just off of this year's high tie. Look at this. We're at the lower parallel. If we're going to find support, this is where it would need to happen. Momentum is deep in oversold territory. What does that tell me? Well, it tells me one thing. If we do break this low, which is, by the way, here's the yearly low, just as an objective kind of straight level of 58.10. But let's say we do break this and momentum is in deep oversold. Guys, at this point, you would expect to see acceleration. Remember, the downside break of a descending formation in price oftentimes is the sharpest part of the decline. So this is why for me on all the commodities, guys, same thing with gold, right? A little bit lower maybe, but this is make or break. We need to see gold above 1205. We need to see crude materialize and stabilize above 58, in my humble opinion. Um, so I can't get excited about any short side here, Ty. If we push below 58.10 and we close below it, yeah, I would expect this thing to get to 53 in a hurry, in a hurry. But as it stands right now, we're at structural support. Here's the intraday chart that we've been following. And again, this is just a parallel of the same slope, extending off some of these lows that we made. Touched it again. Kind of messed with it yesterday, right? But we touched it again on a closed basis, even on a 120-minute chart. Look at that. Touch, touch, touch. So I'm looking for some support. It's worth a shot if we get some sort of exhaustion to the U.S. trade session open, um, you know, on a dip low or a spike lower, as long as we materialize a daily close back within the confines of that formation, I think that you look for support in crude here. It's just getting too bearish. It's, 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 it's getting too bearish. Let me take a look at a uh, client positioning here with uh, IG. Hold on one sec, guys. Okay, client position is actually pretty long here, which is not a good thing, but it's coming off from long extremes. I'll give you an update on this tomorrow, uh, at least from IG's client uh, basis. They have an 84% uh, net positioning on the long side, but that's coming off extremes. Okay, so it's 5.4 to 1 uh, for everyone that's short. Not necessarily something that bodes well for the reversal, but if we do see that start to pull back from long from the upside, um, When you say break, do you mean a daily close or just an intraday low? Uh, Marco, when I say uh, break, if we're breaking an invalidation of like this, it needs to be a daily close. Intraday, you can always spike through things, guys, right? You can always spike through. The, it's the daily close that validates the move, in my humble opinion. Well, that's from a technical analysis basis. So, yeah, intraday price action can, can be pretty wicked. I wouldn't even surprise if we wick it out of here as we are right now, but no, we have to see a, a daily close below that level to validate the break. Make sense, Marco? He says, okay. Uh, I have a question about the DXY when it's not disruptive. Ty, throw it at me. We can go back to it. Any questions here on crude? 58.10 is where we're looking. That's the yearly objective low. So guys, irrespective of what Mike Boutros thinks or Jamie Setley thinks or anyone, if we break 58.10 on a daily close basis, that's an objective break of the yearly opening range low. It's objective. Just so happens that it converges on slope, which is why it's much more important uh, this week. Okay. Okay, let's jump into your questions here. Uh, I got about 10 minutes left. I'm going to try to get through all of them. Dollar Swiss for Marco. 
You know my definitive love for this trade, don't you, Marco? <laughs> Here's Dollar Swiss. We haven't checked it out in a while, so let's uh, update this. Here's the November open. This was a pretty big level, if I remember correctly. 786 retracement, 764 retracement um, of the of decline off the 2016 late high. This is your objective opening range highs as well here. It's a pretty strong divergence, though, on that move, isn't it? Ty, is that question on? Is that question on the uh, DXY? Okay, I'll go back to that in a second. Uh, well, actually, let me do that right now. He says that there's a five wave up on the daily chart. One, two, three, four, five. Could be. Could be. Which would actually still beg some resistance right around this region. It's this advance doesn't look very clean to me. This advance right here, we already completed 100% extension, went through it. So it's definitely not corrective. Yeah, the whole point is that we're at uptrend resistance in the dollar tie. Um, I definitely see the wave count that you're talking about could very well be. I don't work rigidly with that as sort of an expectation of, bam, that's got to happen. But hell, the way that it's coming into a big reason, resistance now, and it looks like the end of what could be the fifth wave, all the more reason, all the more reason why we should be looking for exhaustion, Ty. I'm with you on that one. So dollar Swiss for Marco, here's the daily chart. And this is why 10070 was pretty big for us. We talked about that for a while. Um, again, I don't know what to do with this divergence. I definitely don't want to favor the upside here. We just talked about the DXY kind of looking like it's five waves up, right? Um, let's see if there's anything on the near term charts here. Well, that's not the high day close anymore. This retracement null and void broke the highs, broke the highs. Don't need that. Don't need the October open. Okay, so you start to look for some slope. Do we have any angular support or resistance here? Not the cleanest, but okay. Ongoing divergence into these highs. We have a hourly, it's a four hour reversal bar off the highs. That's certainly suggestive of near term exhaustion. Two hour chart. This does look like it wants to turn over near term with the same respect Look, the breakout, I, let me just put it for you, point blank. I would be looking against this high for at least a near-term move back to the weekly open, if not this pivot zone before we start to move off. Reasons are divergence does look like it's turning. If you have a trigger break here, it's broken. And I can just eye these out at this point, so I don't really have to draw them all the time. But, you know, here's here's a three-point support trigger break break, and it test as resistance. So it looks like it, want, it is primed for at least a near-term pullback. This risk would be against this high. Um, What's up with this thing? The risk would be against this high, in my opinion. And you would only be looking for a move back to that 10070, 10060 level. A huge pivot in price. Massive, massive, important pivot. Right? We never really tested it as support after breaking through. This could be a throw over. This could be a throw over. This looks more like a break, but the test of this as support would validate that. Just so happens weekly open comes in just below. Look for a pullback into this zone. But I'm going to tell you right now, Marco, low conviction trade. <laughs> low conviction trade. That is dollar Swiss. Okay, next one on tap, we want to take a look at 
Uh, Marco, does that help? Let me know if you have any specific questions on that. Uh, may I ask how your recovery is coming? Ty? Oh, thanks for asking, Ty. Um, yeah, I don't really want to get into it, but this uh, still might have still dealing with some issues. Their doctors are finding stuff that we don't want to find and all that good stuff. But uh, God willing, I'm still kicking. So your prayers are all welcome, guys, as always. All right, dollar Swiss. We want to look at euro yen. Who's talking about euro yen? Was that? Ty wants to take a look at that. He's good with that as well. Um, Kelly, that was you. He says, took a long off the October 25th low. October 25th low. So here. Okay, so you've basically held it through this. You got defended twice. Pretty gutsy call. Here's my interpretation for Euro Yen. Um, first of all, that break there should have set off some signals. Um for support uh, and turn a shift or shifted the focus lower, obviously, once we broke back below there. Let me update that. That 100 day moving average looks like I don't think that's there anymore. 100 day. Oh, no, it is right there. Yeah, I remember I was trying to put this together earlier in the week. I got so pissed at this thing. Look, these levels are so icky the 618 didn't do jack we've sailed across it on both sides um the 786 caught the low so let's clean this up i don't know if this slope has much merit to it but 38.2 that looks good i wouldn't even look at that 50. Let's see what this slope looks like. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. Um, geez, I really couldn't tell you on this one. I'm really pretty. He says, but overall your bias here is bearish, right, Marco? I was going to, it's funny that you just asked that. I was going to tell you, my problem here is that I'm, I'm kind of bearish dollar yen and I'm bullish euro. That puts me at odds here. That's, that's bullish euro and yen. So this pair could continue to give you a lot of this this year, which is why for me, I just, a pistol to my head, Kelly, I would say, yeah, if you get a decent rip towards one of these parallels, look to sell, um, Near term, though, I just don't have a very strong conviction. This break was a decent play. I would have ended that play at the 618. It dropped deeper. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Former channel resistance did serve as support. Here's what the intraday chart, right? Downside break. We broke higher. Checked it as support. So you could get a larger recovery here. I just don't have any formations, at least on this front. Let me take a look at some things. Bear with me one sec. There's two pitchforks I would look at here. One would be the low high low from here to see if the slope has any gradient to it. Median line is really clean. Resistance, resistance, break, support, 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 break, drop to the lower end. I bet you if we stretch this into the 618, oh, that is the 618. So 75. Yeah. Let's work with that. So 75% line of the range caught the highs. 75% line here is just a little bit lower. So I know this is a uh, messy at this point, but let me do this. There you go. And let's just make this a little bit darker. that help or make it worse? 
here's what it looks like, guys. The pitchfork off this low high low, October 18th, October 22nd, and October 26th. Um, the other one I was going to look at, and this is going to get really messy, but I just want to see if there's any merit to it, was this. Let me put that as a modified and put this to the 50. Yeah, there's not really much merit to this one either right now. I'd be looking at this just because the median line looks really clean. Support, support, break, resistance, resistance, resistance. So I would see risk for another drop even as deep as this, this region here. Weekly open converges. I'd be looking for this right here, this swing low. Whoops. And that converges on the median line right here. Woo, 50s right there. Sweet. Those are the levels I'd be working with. Ty and uh, Kelly, I am set with the targets now. Thank you. He says, okay, you're more than welcome, sir. Um, Kelly, you're more than welcome. Yeah, I think you're in for a little bit of a, of a nice, again, objective stuff, right? Here's your move into oversold territory, break back above 30 is pretty constructive, at least on the near term for a reversal. The fact that it came off former channel resistance is all the better. Uh, you know, the stretch 2883, 2885, that's just where I would look for target resistance, secondary target 29. But this is the level that needs to break for you to start to think about resumption is that median line. Okay. Uh, Ty, all, all things held constant, you know, if it holds here, this is the objective weekly opening range high too, it could just fail and see a test of the lower parallel even. So for me, the near-term objective focus would be for a, a rally towards the 128.80, 128.83. What's the low in price, he says? The low in price registered at uh, 127.50. Are you asking what this price is right here? This is a 786 uh, of the advance off the October low. So let me clean this up. You don't need this extension anymore. The 100 day we just checked is still there, right? Yeah, 129.11, 129.12, this area right here. If we get that break, I think you look for the resumptive trade. The dot is the trade zone, correct? Yes, the dot are inflection points of where we want to see a reaction tie. So if we break here, expect acceleration. At the same point, if you fail here, expect reversal. This, if you break here, you expect acceleration. If you drop here and it holds, you expect actually a possibility for entry for long side. So yeah, these are main inflection points. These are typically where I'm operating um, on price. Okay, last one that I covered, NASDAQ and S&P. Who is that for? Um, Let's take a look. Chip, here's my here's my take on the S&P. I don't actively trade this. Again, as uh, just a quick note there, he is, here's SPX on the weekly charts and log scale. We've been talking about the fact that we made that reversal off of slope support from the yearly lows uh, earlier um, into the close of October trade. You know, I'm still of the mindset we get a deeper correction. Now, historically, November is a pretty decent price for stocks. December is obviously the you know, Santa Claus rally. Everyone talks about it. So there's not much uh, there from a seasonality standpoint. But for me, this is just the beginning of a little bit larger of a correction. Even if it's only going to be a three-wave move, we'd, you'd need to see a larger, a, a deeper low, a lower low in price. So I don't think we're out of the woods yet. But I don't think this is the area of which you start to necessarily get aggressive on the on the shorts yet. I think you kind of sit it out and look for entries on the long if we get deeper. Here's the near-term chart that we were working with from last week. Again, SPX, it just doesn't tend to work as clean with these levels. Um, you know, whether you're using that low or whether you're using that low, both ways, it looks like it's kind of trying to crack support. If we get through this and get back above the 200 day, which is a little bit lower at this point. No, it's right there. 
Um, yeah, then maybe you look for resumption. I'm of the mindset that this still comes here and starts to fail again for a move lower. And NASDAQ, I don't even know if I have a chart ready for you. Yeah, Chip, you can see this is pretty old analysis here. Hmm. Oh, we already went into that. Okay. If this is a low, if this is a significant low, First, I just want to see if this is a retracement of sorts. It is pretty decent to the 618. Uh, an extension off that low would target. Yeah, I don't have anything for you here. This is my uh, quick off the, off the cuff reference. Uh, 6717 is your low day close that you made so far for October. That's going to be sort of your line in the sand and that it converges on slope here. Um, if this low does materialize when we get through the median line, you're actually looking for an extension to 7439. That's not outside the realm of possibility. Let me clean this up. Don't need these slopes here. But um, on the stretch right now, if you rally and you kind of fail again at that 100, I'd still be looking for a drop into this zone. And that kind of would mesh well with my broader consensus on what we're doing. Gosh darn it. Right here. Near-term resistance chip, I'd be looking here. That's your 100, 200 day moving average. Converges on that slope, former swing highs. That would be the breakout positioning. But from here, this one drop here, it kind of wants to see another low in my opinion, but conviction is very low. The monthly opening range is set at 69.50, basically. You have a clear-cut monthly opening range high, clear-cut monthly opening range low. That break should give us guidance here moving forward. But uh, it's a quick take on it. All right, I'm way over on time, as always, uh, here with you guys, but always a pleasure. Um, I will see you guys on Thursday. Um, more tests tomorrow and then uh and jamie will be on tap tomorrow with the midweek strategy webinar till then best of luck trading we we start to pick up in uh, event risk starting tomorrow okay with some data out of uh eurozone and then we get those cpi figures later as well so keep that in mind uh, i will see you guys bright and early on thursday morning best of luck trading guys cheers thanks ty i appreciate that jay uh jay uh, marco i appreciate that guys cheers